Okay, it says emergency algebra 2. If you're watching this video, that's because you're in a dual section class who is ahead by a day, so I need something to, for us to do while the other class gets caught up. So your job is to take notes in this video. Okay. It applies things we've learned, but new situations that you met and might necessarily not have seen. This will help you on ACT. Okay, big time. Okay, it says solve the system. So when you're solving and it's not a story problem like that, you make an x, y coordinate, okay? And then you apply the multiplication. So you got 6, 6, 6, 3, 3, 3. So that's going to give us 18x minus 24y equals 72. And then 18x. All I'm doing here is rewriting the system. Now again, these are both positives, but then we got to make that and that positive. Okay, um, the problem is the y's go away too. That's zero. I don't put y if it's zero. Then I add these and that's 36. Now, um, what we have here is called par two parallel equations. That means if you graphed them on a, if you graphed them on a, and had two lines, they would never intersect. They would be parallel. Because that x, y thing I made, okay, represents the intersection point of the lines. If I can't, if I end up with a zero, they're parallel. Okay, which is never true about a quadratic equation. Quadratic equation means it has x to the second as the highest degree. Now, here's what those look like. They're parabolas. Okay, now... The end behavior, never true. The end behavior is up and up. Well, I don't want to circle that because it's up and up right here. It's also down and down. It can never be up, down on a quadratic equation, so A is not the answer. Function has four zeros. Well, when I solve x to the second power equations, they have two answers. Zeros mean how many answers? Well, it, there's no way to get four, so that's it never has four zeros. And the function has complex roots. Complex roots means I solve the equation for x to the second and I get i. Well, that happens all the time. We get i's all the time in here, so b is going to be our answer. That's never true about it. Okay, number three. The total area of the parallelogram is represented by the expression 4x to the 4th plus 3x to the 3rd minus 14x to the 2nd plus 33x minus 35. Which of, the, which of the expressions, oh sorry I didn't put multiple choices here. Which expression represents the length of the base, okay? So area is base times height. So this is my area up here, okay? And I have my height right here. So to find the base, I'm going to do the opposite of multiply, which is to divide. But to divide um, algebra expressions, we have to use the synthetic division. Okay. So this right here, the area coefficients represent my dividend. Okay, and then to find my divisor, I take what I'm dividing by, the 4x minus 5. Again, here I'll write it. What you're doing is taking the area, 4x to the 4th plus 3x to the 3rd minus 14x to the 2nd plus 33x minus 35 and dividing by the expression 4x minus 5. Okay, so that, that's why that, that's why I've lined those up. And I take my divisor, 4x minus 5, set that equal to 0, add 5 to both sides, and 4x equals 5. And I divide by 4. And you can write 1.25 or 5 over 4. I'll put 5 over 4, and then I execute the synthetic division. Okay, drop your 4. 4 times 5 over 4, ABC4 four is 5. That's 8. 8 times 5 ABC4 is going to be 10. Negative 4. 5 ABC4 times negative 4 is going to be negative. Um, make sure I get this right. Negative 5. Then I add those, I get 28. And 5 ABC4 times 28 is 35, and that's 0. Okay, now I have my answer. Okay, I have 4 
but instead of being 4x to the 4th, it's 4x to the 3rd, and everything else follows down. Okay, and there we have it. So that represents the length of the base. Okay, at which point corresponds to a zero of the function. Zero of the function means this thing right here is zero. Okay. And that thing is like a y. Okay. So I want to find which value of x makes that zero. Now the one where we got the zero for the x and the y value, you want to cross that out. Okay. Zeros of the function mean the y coordinate is zero. Okay. Because remember, this is where y, you can put y, but a zero of the function means that's zero. Now, what I'm going to do then is substitute these numbers in for x and see if I can get zero. Remember, zero of the function usually means I'm substituting the values and finding the values of x that give you zero all by itself. Okay, Not the other way around where you put zero in and get negative 15. Okay. Zero of the function means whatever's over here, f of x, y, whatever, okay? It means the function, the expression is equal to zero, okay? So y is gone, okay? So y is zero, so that's why I cross that one out, because y is not zero right here. It is in these three, so it's between those. Okay, I did not get zero, so five is not a zero of the function. Now I plug in negative five. See, when they give you a multiple choice, you just plug them in. It goes a lot faster than having to factor or use the quadratic formula, which you could. There's 0. Now, if I put negative 3 into the equation, I didn't get 0, so it can't be that one. Just this one. So again, zero of the function means you take that fx. First off, put the, a y under the fx. That's what that really means. And then cross it out and put zero. Okay. So you need a y coordinate of zero. That's why you can get rid of that one on the spot. Then you substitute these numbers in for x on a calculator and see where you can get zero. Okay, this one looks really confusing. It's actually not that hard when we got all these multiple choices. A bridge supported by a parabolic arch spans a stream of water 180 feet wide. There must be a clearance of at least 40 feet over a 100-foot channel in the middle of the stream. The origin is placed at water, and right there is the origin. Okay, Origin is placed at water level directly below the center of the arch. Okay. Which equation best represents the situation? Now here's how you can figure this out pretty easily. You have 0 in the middle. From here to here is 180. Why don't you divide your 180 by 2 in half? And it's 90, so it's positive 90 here, negative 90 there. Those are the x-intercepts. So what equation has a plus 90 and a minus 90? Probably part B, okay? All these other ones would be crossed out. And all the other stuff I really don't care about. Okay? I mean, yeah. Okay, this one's an easy one, too. Sophia has $25 in her savings account. By the way, this little dark part here is A. Okay? $25 in her savings account. She plans to deposit between $5 and $10 each week into her account. On the graph, line M, and this is line M, represents a deposit of $5 per week. So she starts at $20, and after two weeks, she's up to $30. Four weeks, three weeks, she'd be up to $35 and $40 and so forth. That's where she's depositing $5 per week. Line N represents a deposit of exactly $10 per week. So here's N. So you're at 20 still, 25. And if you deposit 10, you go up by 10 every time. So that's 35, 45, 55, 65, and so forth. So T Sophia deposits between 5 and 10 per week. Which region on the graph represents all possible balances in her account? Well, Remember, this is the one where it's going up by 5 every week. This is the one where it goes up by 10. She's doing between that, so I guess it's probably in there, which is region B. 
easy. Okay. Okay, number seven. To solve the equation x to the second plus 3w equals p for x, and then circle what's the right answer. So rewrite that out so you got some workspace. But we'll circle the x squared. It doesn't have a multiplier. Get that 3w out of there. You'd subtract 3w, but then you'd put it behind the p. So you have x to the second equals p minus 3w. Then to get rid of the second power, you square root the other side, which has x equals the square root of p minus 3w minus 3w. That would be c. And the plus minus is there because when you square root, you put that in front. But I could tell that it was going to be that one. This would be the answer if it would have said minus 3w. Three three okay, number 8. Tia deposited X dollars in a bank account that paid 4% interest. She also deposited Y dollars in a bank account that paid 8% interest. The system below represents one year's interest on Tia's deposit. So you got 4% of X plus 8% of Y equals 240. And then you have another equation that tells you that 4% of X is equal to 8% of Y. Now we're going to solve that system. But you don't want to use the times, times, times because this isn't lined up in the same formation. What you're going to do is go down here. You're going to divide both sides by the 0 0.04. And then x is now isolated by itself. Two, so that would be 2y. So get rid of that, pretend you didn't have it. Now I want you to box up your x and circle the other side because those are equivalent expressions. Now go to your other equation. 0.04x plus 0.08y equals 240. Now since the x here is by itself, we are going to replace the x substitute for the x. I'll tell you what we're substituting here in a bit. And we are going to substitute 2y. So you need to find that product right there. 0.08y plus the 0.08y that was already there equals 240. Now you're going to add your y's, combine like terms. That's going to be 0.16y equals 240. Now divide both sides by 0.16 and you'll have your answer for y. Okay, I got 1500. Now to find your answer for x, you're going to come over here, get your y out of there, and put 1,500. So it's 2 times 1,500, which is 3,000. So again, that's how to solve a system where you can't, it's not lined up to do the times, times, times. You isolate one of your variables, and once that's isolated, you can replace that letter with the expression on the other side. Okay. We have done that before, just not very much, like at, hardly at all this year. Now we've got to answer A, B, C, D. Based on the solution of the systems of equations, what can you conclude? Well, let's find the one where it talks about 3,000 and 1,500. Not there. Not there. Okay, right there it does, right there it does. So which is it? Let's read it. The deposit amounts were 3000 and 1500 The amounts of interest earned in each account were 240 and 120 Okay, The deposit amounts were 3000 and 1500 and the amount of interest earned in each account was 120 Well, how do we find the interest earned in each account? You're going to multiply your x times the interest rate, okay? 4%, 0 0.04, and then we'll multiply this by 0 0.08. Because this is how much you deposited, and you're going to find what interest came out of there. 120. One twenty. Okay, where does it say each of those 120? Right there, D. Okay. 
That one's kind of a hard one. Number nine, the wording is more confusing than what it means. The power created by a wind turbine is proportional. And when they use the term varies directly, that means proportional. I hate it when they do that, okay? It's proportional. That means you're going to use proportions to solve this problem. It's proportional with the wind speed and miles per hour. A turbine with 30% efficiency spinning a 50 mile per hour wind can be expected to produce 10,000 watts of electricity. How many watts would the same turbine produce in a 25 mile an hour wind speed? The 30% is there to try to throw you off, okay? The two things you need, okay, the power and the wind speed. So the wind speed's 50 MPH, and the power is 10,000 watts. Now, what we have, we got the wind speed, okay? and we just have to find the number of watts. That's what direct variation means. Anytime you get a problem with that, you just go like that, 5,000, which makes sense because 25 is half of 50, 5,000 is half of 10,000 watts. Okay, one root of a cubic equation. Cubic equation means x to the third is 2i. How many real roots does the equation have? Remember, roots mean solutions. Okay. Now, if one, if two i is one of them, negative two i has to be the other one. And then this, remember, i means complex roots. The opposite of complex roots is real roots. Okay. So those are two complex roots that would leave one real root. So how many real roots do you have? You have one. Complex roots run in pairs. Okay. If they tell you the positive, the negative is also one. Okay, number 11. What is the value of the quote-unquote real part of the sum of the expression 6 plus 4i and 5 minus i? So sum means addition. We're going to add those. We've done this many times. I'm going to put a 1 in front of the i. Okay, 6 plus 5 is 11. 4 plus negative 1 is 3. Okay, the three i is the complex part. The real, the real part is the one without the i, so 11 would be the answer. Okay, So the value of the real part means you just add the real parts. The complex parts would be 3i. Real and complex are like opposites. Complex means it has i, real means it does not. If the solutions of an equation are negative 1, 2, and 5, what's the sum of the zeros of the related function? This, you can't be serious. This is that easy. This is really easy, okay? The solutions are the zeros. They mean the same thing. Solutions, roots, zeros, whatever. And they told me what they were. Negative 1, 2, and 5. The sum of them is just adding them together, okay? It's 1, sum 6. Okay, 13. Assume y, there's that term varies directly, so you're going to set up proportions. If y equals negative 3 when x equals negative 2 fifths, so I'm going to put negative 3, negative 2 fifths, and then I'm going to put a y here and an x here. What is x if y is 45? Okay, so I put 45 across from the negative 3 and I cross multiply and divide. So negative 2abc5 times 45 divided by negative 3, and that's 6. Okay, what is the x-coordinate of the point where a relative maximum occurs? Now, you don't have to go to this. I'm just going to show you. You'd have to have a graphing calculator. And you punch in, that's supposed to say g of x, by the way, not that it really matters. Negative 2x caret 3, okay, plus 6x to the second power, minus 10. Okay, go find a relative maximum. It's got to be a loop where it goes upward right there. Now, that's the at 2 negative 2 is what that says, 2 negative 2. Negative two. Now it says the x coordinate, so it would be the 2. So 2 is the answer. 
using a graph, find the real zero of the function, okay? So, real zero is going to be where it crosses the x-axis. It must do it one time, okay? It's got three roots, but two of them must be imaginary then, okay? They must be complex roots. To find the real zero, we punch in 2x, power of 3, minus 2x. Two, two power 2 plus x minus 1. Now, it crosses the x-axis once, that's why there's one real zero, okay? One zero, so one is the real zero, okay? One. If x equals one, y is zero. Remember, zeros of a function is what makes the y zero, okay? The way to find where the y is zero is to look along the x-axis. How many imaginary roots does that have? It doesn't want what they are. Now, there's a way to figure it out that I failed you as a teacher and haven't taught you. Okay, To find out whether you have real or imaginary, you use this part of the quadratic formula, just the square root part. So b, negative 5. Four, a would be 1, c would be 10. So negative 5 to the second would be 25. 4 times 1 times 10 is 40. And we have a negative. So that would be i. So it would have two imaginary roots. Okay, The i stands for imaginary. What's the product of 2 plus i times 2 minus i? That's product. So you just we've done this 2 times 2. 2 times negative i, i times 2, then i times negative i. That i times negative i looks kind of weird, so put 1's in front. So that's 4, that's negative 2 with i, if you put a 1 there, okay? That's positive 2 with i, so those cancel, and that's negative 1 with i to the second, but that's negative 1, okay? And that's 1 but I can combine 4 to 1, so it's 5. 5 is the product of that, okay? It ends up being a constant. Okay, 18, we did at the beginning of the year. Solve the absolute value inequality. Make your table and put x minus 3, x minus 3. Now, you're going to put the sign here, but then we're going to flip it in the other part. Now, again, I'll go over why it's flipped here in a second. You've got to undo the multiplication by negative 2. You're going to divide by negative 2, and that ends up being 8. Here's why you flip the sign. Don't draw this number line. 8 and negative 8 are the two possible absolute values. You're less than 8. So being less than 8 places from 0 would be anything in this range. Okay? So it's less than 8, but then it's greater than negative 8. Don't draw that. Hope you didn't draw that. You're going to make a number line here at the end. but And then you just solve using simple algebra. Thankfully, we did not. Oh, shoot. I totally jacked this up. We're dividing by a negative number here, so that sign has to flip. Gosh! Okay? We have a negative multiplier. we got to flip the sign, so it's going to be greater than or equal here, less than or equal here. So we're greater than or equal to 11, but less than or equal to negative 5. Okay? Yeah, that division thing still applies when you're dealing with absolute values. Okay, so you put 11 here negative 5 here, greater than 11, but less than negative 5. So they diverge. When they diverge, you write your answer as x greater than or equal to 11, or x less than or equal to negative 5. When they converge, you write it differently, but I'd have to show you one, and I don't think I have time in the video. So it's really similar to solving the equations. you got to watch for the sign flipping if you have a negative multiplier in the front. Then you come over here and remember to switch the sign over 
on the on the on the negative portion. Okay, then you number line your solutions and then write them. Okay, solve the equation x to the second minus 7x equals 8. This is easy. There's two roots, two solutions, whatever you want to call them. Okay, you got x second. You've also got x to the first, so move the 8 out of there. So you have 0. So we got x squared minus 7x minus 8 equals 0. GCF would be just 1. I mean, come on, look at it. Okay. Then I make my table. It'd be negative 8 as a product. Positive times a negative. Adding to get negative 7. 1 and 8. Bingo. A is 1x to the second. We can drop the 1 and then split the x squared to x. x so it would be x plus 1, x minus 8. Okay, so my roots, x plus 1 could equal 0, so x minus 8 equals 0. So that would give you negative 1, and the other one would be 8. This one is really confusing. It's hard to understand. It ain't that hard to do. A cat ran around a telephone pole on a path modeled by the equation y equals negative 1x squared plus 4x minus 1. At what point is the cat the furthest away from the pole, assuming the pole is at the coordinate 2, 0? Okay. And we're only graphing in one quadrant here, the positive, positive. Now, here's the y-axis. Find where it would cross the y-axis, which is easy. It's the constant at the end. So negative 1 would be down here. Then just make a path that goes around. It's a parabola because it's x to the second. Well, he's furthest away right there. That's the like finding the maximum point. So opposite of b divided by 2 times a, and then to find the y-coordinate, we just replace x. So that's A, that's B. So the opposite of B, that would be negative 4. 2 times negative 1, negative 2. So divide, you get 2. Now substitute the 2 into the equation for X. That'd be two. No, I did that wrong. Three. What point is he furthest away? He's furthest away at the coordinate point two, three. Okay, it's just the vertex applied. The maximum, minimum. It's just another problem you do it on a coordinate system. Okay, then we're going to deal with some equations based on graphs. Write an equation represented by this graph. Now, a V is an absolute value. So you write Y equals absolute value of X minus H plus K, and then A in front. It's not a parabola. Parabolas are used. This is a V. Okay, you have to replace everything but the X and the Y here. Okay, so your HK is the vertex. So you're over 2, up 3. So get rid of your H and put 2, and we get rid of your K and put 3. Now we've got to find A, but it's not as hard as when you have a parabola. The A is just the slope from the vertex to one of the other points. It can be anyone. I'll pick this one. So that's down 2, right 2. So I make a ratio, negative 2 over 2, and that simplifies to negative 1. Okay. So it's y equals negative 1 times the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3. Okay, this one we had not, I have not worked on with you guys as much as I should have. Write an equation that goes through point P and is perpendicular to the line. To write an equation based off of lines, it's y equals mx plus B. We have to find M, we have to find B. 
Now, M is the slope, so I'm going to start at one of the points. It doesn't matter which one, okay? I'm going up one, two, three. I'm going one, two, three, four. But here's the thing, okay? The line that I need to write an equation for is a total, it's, a, it's another totally different line than this line here. But it's perpendicular, meaning it crosses it and forms a right angle. Perpendicular slopes are opposite reciprocals. So you take the slope of the line that's there and flip it. And if that was positive, yours has to be negative. Okay, so negative four thirds is the m value, and then b you use the comp the coordinate y equals mx plus b. So the m you're going to use negative four over three. Okay, and then for the x y that's what point p is for because your line has to pass through point p. So make the point p into a coordinate. You write one up three. Okay, so y is 3 times 1, okay? So we'll take negative 4 thirds times 1, it'd be negative 4 thirds plus b, and then I'm going to add 4 thirds. Okay, so I add 3 plus 4abc3, and it's 4 and 1 third. So that's the equation. Y equals negative 4 thirds X plus 4 and 1 third. That's your equation. That's how you write equations based off of lines. Y equals MX plus B. Again, the M, when they say parallel, you use the same M as this one has, but perpendicular, you have to find the M of the line that's there, flip it, and then use Y equals MX plus B to find the next one. Now, don't you don't have to do this, but from this point, if I go down 4, right 3, and then make those, okay, those lines are going to be perpendicular. They will form a right angle. Last one. Write an equation of the function. This is a parabola. It's like an absolute value, but the a is much harder to find. Instead of an absolute value, it's x minus h in parentheses with the second power outside and then k. Okay, h, k is the vertex. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So h is 4 and so is k. Okay, now I have to find the A, but I can't use slopes, okay? I need to write that original equation. And I need another point, okay? I'll use either one works, and this would be 5, 3, or 3, 3. And replace every number but the H. So Y is going to be 3, and then A is what I'm solving for. Then x minus h, okay, so it's going to be 3 minus 4, raised to the power of 2, plus k, which is 4. Okay, so I simplify that. 1. So 3 is equal to 1a plus 4. So minus 4, and that gives you negative 1. You don't need to divide, negative 1 is your a value. So let's write that so it looks prettier. Y equals negative 1, parentheses, x minus 4 to the second plus 4. There's the equation. Okay, what are the zeros of the function? Okay, the zeros of the function are where they cross the x-axis. So they cross at 2, and they cross 2, 3, 4, 5, and they cross at 6. Those are the zeros. Number 23, don't do. Um, yeah, we can do 23, I guess. But to do 23, I don't do this as much as I should. It says, how has a function been transformed from the parent function y equals x squared? What the heck's a parent function? It's just y and x with a second power on the x. 
So let's just make a table. 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. What's 2 to the second? 4. 1 to the second? 1. 0 to the second? 0. Negative 1 to the second's 1 still. And negative 2, remember, the second power means times itself. So it goes like that. Okay, so we're going to graph that. So 2, 4. Right 1, up 1. 0, 0, left 1, up 1, left 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so make that, that's called the parent function. Okay, there's two main differences we need to look at. First off, it's been inverted. This here is upside down, so you write inverted. That's one difference. And another difference is the vertex is not at the origin. The vertex has been shifted one, two, three, four units to the right and four units up. So you put vertex, four units right, and four units up. Now I think the narrowness, wideness is the same because you're 1, 1, and you're 1, 1 here as well. Then you're 2, 4, and then 2, 4. Yeah, so the narrowness, wideness didn't change. Okay. The parent function is y equals x squared. You just compare it to the function that's right here.